to my live viewers. I'm syncing up the cameras. Mm -hmm. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, syncing up cameras, you that I'm pointing to, that is a low def. You guys, high def cameras. Why do I do it that way? Because it goes live on my show in lower def. For people that don't have super fast internet speeds or in really bad places. And then, of course, the high def is on the Media Speaks. Sam I.B., Correct Views, member show of the Media Speaks. All right, friends, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go straight into the news. A couple stories here about the lie that is global warming. Man-made global warming is a lie. Somebody put a house beat behind that for me. I've been asking for years. All right, guys. Global cooling. Antarctic sea ice coverage continues to break records. No. No, Sam. The, the planet's warming. Someone let Al Gore know that the South Pole isn't melting. Antarctic sea ice coverage reaches levels for April, hitting 3.5 million square miles, the largest on record. I was talking this over with Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen last night. Um, how is there enough Earth mass to have 3.5 million miles of ice, a square miles of ice on the South Pole? I... I have no idea if anybody can leave it on my comment line. Is it a matter of how deep it goes? Or I just didn't think there was that much, that many square miles on the Earth, uh, you know, to, down there to, to be that massive. Um, I was impressed. Anyway, if uh, you're not impressed, you should be, because it goes on to say that that is the largest uh, coverage of ice ever recorded. But we're warming the planet. It was a cold summer down in, down in Antarctica with sea ice coverage growing 43,500 square miles per day. How does that happen? Somebody please comment line me here. According to the National Snow and Ice Data Center, April 2014 beats the previous sea ice coverage record from April 2008 by a whopping 124,000 square miles of ice. We're warming the planet. But even with autumn in full swing in the South Pole, record levels continue to be set in early May, reports the NCDC. Sea ice levels have been significantly above satellite data averages for 16 consecutive months, and there's a link to it. The most pronounced growth in sea ice coverage is in the eastern Weddell Sea and areas south of Australia and along the southeastern Indian Ocean, which from what I see from documentaries is a very empty place. According to NCDC, all temperatures in the Weddell Sea region have been 1 to 2 degrees Celsius below the 1981 to 2010 average during March and April. Similar cooling trends have lowered average temperatures along the southern Indian Ocean by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. We are not getting warmer. However, across much of the southern hemisphere, temperatures have risen, um, have been above average, it mentions in the Antarctic Peninsula. And let's also remember that a certain amount of climate change is happening as a result of the uh, massive tilt that we had a, while, uh, a number of years ago. Uh, the Earth was also greatly affected by, uh, well, not greatly, but it, it was thrown off its axis by the uh, Fukushima March 11th earthquake. It hit so hard. And uh, again, uh, a creeper, my friend, he was talking about uh, where the uh, Garden of Eden was. It's a desert now. We didn't cause that by smokestacks. It happened because the planet does drag, uh, change to some degree. But man is not warming the planet. Uh, more on that real quick since I went and let off with it. Uh, PJ Dub, Paul Joseph Watson, InfoWars, MSM pushes doomsday Arctic sheet ice propaganda. So what did MSM... Uh, oh, listen to this. Scaremongering headlines about the collapse of the Antarctic ice sheet omitted the fact that such an event 
isn't predicted to happen for as much as 1,000 years, underscoring once again how the mass media grossly exaggerates the threat posed by global warming. What's that mean in English? That's why you tune into the correct views. What that means is, remember how I just told you about uh, the, uh, well, what's, what's another good example? Uh, was it the Sea of Bethesda, where if you went into the pool, there was a stirring in the water. That, that's, that, that body of water I'm talking about today is a brick road, I believe. It's, it's a dry seabed. It's nothing there. It wasn't caused by anything other than normal earth changes. In 1,000 years, the collapse of the Antarctic ice sheet is going to happen. Whether or not we burn another fossil fuel or not, just like the 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 it's like just like the Garden of Eden is not a garden anymore. It's a good place to get bitten by a scorpion. Figure it out. It's not smokestacks and cars. On Monday, the Guardian reported that the Western and Arctic ice sheet collapse has already begun prompting the likes of NBC News, the New York Times, and the LA Times, and CNN to hastily regurgitate the alarmism that the Earth is doing exactly what it's always done. It isn't until the third paragraph of the Guardian article that the true context of the story becomes clear when Suzanne Goldenberg acknowledges that the potential loss of the ice sheet, along with the 13-foot sea level rise, quote, is still several centuries off and potentially up to 1,000 years away. It says that uh, even the New York Times environmental writer Andy Rechkin, a, a proponent of man-made global warming theory, slammed this as an awful misuse of the word collapse. In other words, it's falling apart right in front of them. Go to the article. It's on InfoWars. Uh, it will show you the ice sheet grew 53,000 square miles in a year from 2012 to 2013. Friends, man is not warming the planet. Uh, real quick, I want to get to this. Uh, TheGuardian.com. Concern at plan to let HMRC recover unpaid tax directly from bank accounts. I've said it a million times. We know what happened in Cyprus. For those of you that don't, because you were listening to the new Gay Gaga single, uh, Cyprus had a number of economic problems, and the solution was to give them a haircut. No, it's not what you think. I would know. No. What it is, is they took money out of citizens' bank accounts, a haircut, in order to, for a bail-in to help everyone. Do you know who didn't get their money stolen by the government? People that didn't bank. How do you not bank? Mediaspeaks.com, How to Live Without Banks. I wrote an entire article on it. I do it every single day. Um, but I need to have my bank open to cash my check. I explain that too. Why would you leave money in it? Well, here we go. It would only, it would only happen in Cyprus. England would never do anything like that. America never would. No, of course not. Look at the last uh, correct views. Trust me, says Obama. Last posting. Look that up. Plans to give HM Revenue and Customs uh, the power to dip into bank accounts to recover unpaid tax will leave people open to fraud and error, a Commons Watchdog group has warned. Yeah, I would say so. The Treasury Select Committee, led by Tory MP Andrew Tyree, said that the current proposals are very concerning because people will be at risk of having money wrongly taken out by HMRC. Yeah, like, do we know anything that even closely resembles central banking and IRS taxing or anything like that that has any idea what they're doing on a regular basis? No, of course we don't. Around 17,000 people per year could be affected by the new tech collection powers, which are expected to raise around $100 million a year. If I were you, I would not be one of the people that $100 million comes out of, and you won't be if you listen to the correct views. The Treasury insists there are sufficient safeguards. Of course, trust us, said Ka the Snake. I'm sorry, HMRC, close. 
will only be able to remove the money after four ignored requests for the tax. The money due is more than 1,000 euros and only if there is a $5,000 in the account afterwards. Yeah, of course, that's how it starts. <coughs> Pardon me. Second of all, if you are one of these people, a good example, student loans hosed me. Uh, I went through a separation with my ex and I moved. I've told this story before. It's not uncommon when going through a separation to forget to dot your I's and T's. I was married for a while. Um, I didn't turn in a change of address form. So uh, student loans tried to contact me maybe four times. They couldn't find me, but they could find me the day it went into default. Isn't that amazing? Don't you find that st simply amazing? Within days of the default date, they found me. They couldn't find me before. And of course, nothing they could do about it now. This is an open door into that. And they're one reason I don't bank. Or not bank. This policy is highly dependent on HMRC's ability to accurately determine which taxpayers owe money and what amounts they owe. An ability not always demonstrated in the past, the committee said. Guys, you can read the story, but basically you can see where it's going. Oh yeah, people that have at least $5,000 left, that's how it always starts. Stuff's always for the children, and then ends up hosing the adults. Um, this is the same kind of thing, where if you leave money in a bank, then the people that run the world, which is bankers, will take your money. You listening to this, you. So don't have your money in banks. Uh, businessinsider.com. I want to get to this real quick because we've got news from the science front now uh, on Saturday. And I will be back on the Saturday edition, by the way. Media Speaks, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have the news from the science front. And as I've been looking them up, I have been um, inundated with science that I'm not going to be able to get to. So I want to go ahead and do one of them on this show, kind of as a little plug for that. A rare gar goblin shark caught in Florida hasn't been seen in more than a decade. This thing is almost as ugly as Ruth Bader Ginsburg by Shazarazad's hat. I'm telling you, this is mighty frightening looking shark. On Wednesday, a Florida fisherman accidentally pulled up an 18-foot gob goblin shark while he was going for shrimp, NOAA Fisheries Service reported. Why are you reporting on this, Sam? Because, like, uh, Michael Savage says the same thing. You can't deal with just political madness all the time. You're going to lose your mind if you do. And trust me, we'll get back to it. This is only the second ever goblin shark to be spotted in the Gulf of Mexico, according to the agency. The first goblin shark sighting in this area was nearly 15 years ago when commercial fishers captured one in 2000. David Schiffman of Southern Fried Science pointed out. Uh, look it up, guys. The goblin shark almost looks like it has a human's face in some areas. It's really creepy. After the most recent shark was captured off the Florida Keys, it was released and swam away, Noah said. Does that mean I believe in macro evolution? No, it does not. The goblin shark is a deep water species, but not much is known about it since the prehistoric looking creatures are rarely caught. The shark has previously been reported off the eastern Pacific, off Japan, Australia, and New Zealand, according to Noah. Pause. Now, I'm not in favor of eating cloned animals or anything like that. But I'm also not one of these anti-science people. And when I get to this vaccine story in a minute, you'll see what I mean. Um, in instances like this, where there's a lot to learn, why wouldn't they clone the goblin shark and then simply watch how it acts? Why wouldn't they, if you don't want to do that, put some kind of tracking thing on this? Why wouldn't they, you know, monitor it, see what its life is like? I don't understand when they get these kinds of opportunities uh, why they don't take advantage of them. Notice at no point did I ever say they should kill the shark, which is oftentimes what ends up happening. The sharks have distinct, well, not from these people, the sharks have distinctive features with a long head, flat snout, and protruding jaw. They are also pinkish in color and have blue fins. They don't have any commercial value other than their jaws, marine biologist Charlotte Stenberg told Southern Fried Science. But I have a Japanese friend who ate some of it and thought that the tongue was delicious. Oh, that 
So good luck finding one. How how this guy get one to eat a tongue out of it? But we don't know anything about it. What? <sighs> They're from Japan. They're gonna look even more deformed. Biologists encourage people to call and report these rare sightings and catches as the information that they collect allows them to know more about the species, Noah said. And again, you're going to want to look this up. This is a rather strange looking beast, and it's uh, really cool that they found one. It's a little science update. If you don't like it, well, then relax. We're going into all the who killed who stuff in a minute. And if you did like it, make sure you check out uh, Saturday edition, 2, 2, e 2 p.m. EST and uh, you'll be seeing news from the science front. Also, guys, look up the works of Mike McLaughlin, amazing fiction writer, and he's a sponsor of this show. He's one of the reasons we're able to print out the dunce caps, um, and I'm happy to have him on board. Why? Because he writes really good stories, and I like being able to promote an author on here. So when's the last time you saw an advertisement for a, a, a fictional writer on TV? Most never, especially when you factor out Stephen King. So, let's support the talent we have. And Mike McLaughlin, looking up on Facebook, is such a talent. Also, remember, been a longtime supporter of this show, and I'm delighted about this too because their food's delicious. The Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. Delicious food. Raviolis, chicken fingers, drinks made the right way every time you order one. The Arcadia Grill. All right, guys, Truth Revolt, Yehuda Remmer, leaked Delaware bill shows 3D gun ban. I'm very, very proud of uh, Jeffrey Spiegelman here. A new bill being circulated for co-sponsors in Delaware would make any, possession, any person in possession of a firearm that is undetectable by a metal detector a felon. That may sound good on paper, but you're about to find out why that's a really stupid idea. Uh, and again, it's not a good idea if you're a libertarian-minded person such as me. But even if you're not, you're going to find why that's a really dumb idea in a minute. The bill, which has not been posted online, was leaked by State Representative Jeffrey Spiegelman, God bless him, via a phone picture. Posted on thetruthaboutguns.com, Spiegelman writes, First, let me apologize for the poor quality. This bill, 137, was circulated today for co-sponsors, and I only had a couple of seconds to take a picture of it with my cell phone. And these are his thoughts. How do you enforce this if 3D printers are legal? The computer file needed for the 3D printer is legal, and neither is traceable, as it should be. I want to get a 3D printer. Why does the bill mention parts that are not part of the legal definition of a firearm? In other words, by the letter of this law, after the mentioned parts are removed, the gun could still retain metal sights or other parts and be legal or illegal. If the whole firearm is plastic for a metallic serial number plate, then is it legal or illegal? If the plastic magazine and similar parts illegal or only illegal when attached to the legally defined firearm? If there is an official handheld metal detector setting, commercial metal detectors can detect the iron that is in a person's blood. In other words, if it's ever fired a bullet that is metal, it's going to show up. Um, what is undetectable ammunition? Metal, aren't they? What is an undetectable magazine? Will existing firearms or parts be grandfathered in? How would it be known if they are pre- or post-ban, if the printed firearms or the parts are not dead? And this man is awesome. So, more insanity on them and trying to infringe upon our gun rights, of which they have no right to do. Real short story, thedailybeast.com. Um, I, uh, I'm going to read more about this before I start telling anybody to do it. I avoid vaccines. All vaccines... <sighs> if they came out with a vaccine, say I was going... Uh, say I was going to be going to do a report or a, a documentary... The Media Speaks is doing a documentary, and in this area, they know that there is a very high percentage of anthrax. It's, it's all over. We're doing a documentary on anthrax. We're going into where the anthrax is. I would contemplate getting an anthrax vaccine. Notice I said contemplate. Now I'm going to put these toxins into me for the flu. Are you out of your mind? Um... 
I am very, very against vaccines in almost every instance you can think of. Give me an exception like the one I gave you, yes. Um, having said that, if you're on your deathbed, and it sounds like this story is dealing with someone that was, what would you do to your body in order to maybe maybe cure it? Not just, not just, you know, add a week to your life. Cure it. The Mayo Clinic successfully destroyed late-stage cancer. Late stage, is that three or four? Uh, by using a massive dose of measles vaccine. Stacy Erholtz had run out of treatment options for her blood cancer until she received enough measles vaccine to inoculate 10 million people as part of a medical trial. How do you hold the fluid of 10 million vaccines into your body? Do they concentrate it? Comment line. Now she's in complete remission and the cancer is undetectable in her body. Researchers have been working to test cancer-killing viruses for years and they've been known to be effective in mice. The Mayo Clinic will launch, launch a larger trial using the measles vaccine no later than September. God bless her. And if it works, God bless every person it works for. The amount of uh, toxins and other diseases that she could be open for from doing this, who knows? But hopefully it's none. And in that instance, vaccines are fine. In that instance. Yeah. God bless her. Uh, more on this story. Again, I, I'd be terrified if I was her. But, uh, I mean, what's more terrifying than cancer? Let's be real here. I don't like vaccines. I didn't say I was a caveman. Uh, PrisonPlanet.com posted this. It's from RT Arusha Today. Putin today. Lip sealed U.S. government officials banned from talking about leaked document. It's the dumdy of the day. The dumdy of the day. Uh, every day we have the dumdy of the day, and uh, this is what it is. It's uh, not going to win the Dutz Cap of the Month Award, which goes off once a month. You can see them on my page, but it's close. U.S. officials will soon be banned from citing leaked data in speeches and written documents. The new policy, which is being pushed through by the head of the NSA, will crack down on sourcing unauthorized disclosures and harm national security. In other words, don't talk about Fight Club. Um, <laughs> if a document is leaked and the officials are not allowed to speak on it, then everybody else is going to be conjecturing. And that is going to be worse than the leak. Let's play pretend. Ed Snowden has just leaked these documents, but nobody's allowed to address them. Well, somebody decides to write an article that says uh, the U.S. was planning to set off a nuclear bomb in the middle of Washington, D.C. Well, that's not true. That's not in there anywhere. You go to ask the NSA and they won't answer the question. That makes it sound guilty. Now you've got boneheads believing the Washington, D.C. story. That is just one way that this is dumb. Just one way on the surface why this is stupid. A pre-publication review from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence has been released, prohibiting both current and former officials from publicly acknowledging disclosures of classified information. Even if the leaks are being discussed by the media, officials must still turn a blind eye to them or face penalties. There's nothing to see behind the curtain. The use of such information in a publication can confirm the, the validity of an unauthorized disclosure and cause more harm to national security, the review said. The information in the publication. This guy is a moron. The ban will not only extend to opinion articles, books, and terms papers, but also to unofficial written material. I get accused of being a conspiracy theorist. theorist I am not, but those who are are going to have a field day with this because they'll be able to write anything. And uh, I grant that officials lie to us, but their official statement is also uh, newsworthy. And now they have to stand there like they don't know anything. And uh, again, this is going to be a mess. Failure to adhere to the new policy may result in the imposition of civil and administrative penalties and may result in the loss of security clearances and access, as the document says. 
Timothy Edgar, a visiting professor at Brown University, told the New York Times that the policy goes too far by prohibiting former employees from citing news reports that have been in public domain. You're basically saying people can't talk about what everyone else in the country is talking about, he said. I think that is awkward and overly broad in terms of restricting speech. There's another reason it wasn't the dumdy of the day. This new policy comes off the back of regulations introduced by intelligence chief moron James Clamper back in April. Friends, that has to be, and this is a great month for dumdies, but that has to be the dumbest I've done so far. They're always the last story on the show, but so far this month, wow. Stupid. And just wait till you see who ends up winning. I had so many, it's <laughs> off the charts. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to The Media Speaks. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. You'll be very happy that you did. Also, donate to the show when you donate here, when you advertise with me. That's what helps me grow. That's what keeps me going. You hitting subscribe. You listening to this? Leave a comment. Let me know you subscribe because when you do, it helps. When I go to advertisers and my subscription list is there and my hits are there, that helps. So thank you for doing all of it. Good night, friends. God bless. And good night to my live listening friends.